Hello, everybody. Time to add in those attacks. Uh, we are going to be able to attack when we're in a standard movement position, and we are going to attack light when we get the attack light boolean value triggered, and we're going to attack heavy when we get the attack heavy boolean value triggered, and I added those down here, as you can see. So now all we have to do is actually put those values into the animator when the UI, when the player actually does something like that. And you can see that I already did a little bit of playing around to make sure that I knew what was going to happen, and I do. How nice. The first thing we want to do is break this update up because the it's starting to get a little bit long. And we're also going to need an attack update. So here in attack update we say if input dot uh, get mouse button up one or zero rather then we want to trigger our animator the boolean to be attack light comma true and that means that once we click the button we're going to set that light attack to be true and if we go over here into the scene and press play and we hit the button you can see that we now attack but it just continuously attacks forever so that's obviously not what we want. We want to set that boolean back to false. When? How, do we, how will we know when the attack's over? How will we know any of that stuff? Well, actually, we don't care when the attack animation is over. We can just set it to false right here. Because that'll give us exactly one frame of it being true, which is long enough for the animator to pick up on that and to move into that animation if it's possible to. So now, we go back in th into this and we click in the, in the window and then click. We attack just once. works fine. But how do we do our heavy attack? Well, this triggers when we click. The heavy attack triggers when we hold it down. When we hold the mouse button down for long enough, we do a heavy attack instead of a light attack. In order to actually do that, we're going to have a public float heavy attack delay, and we'll make it equal to a quarter of a second, and we'll say public, oh no, a protected float heavy attack delay counter. Pretty easy, right? And so down here in attack update, we say if input dot get mouse button zero, and this triggers whenever the mouse button is down. It doesn't trigger when you click. It doesn't trigger when you let up. It triggers as long as the mouse button is down. And that lets us add our heavy attack delay counter plus equals time dot delta time. Uh, now, if we wanted more precision, we probably could get more precision out of this by putting it into the physics steps, but I think it's fine where it is. Um, I don't think that it's going to be that precise. We can always move it if we need to. And then we can say if heavy attack delay counter is greater than or equal to heavy attack delay, well then we want to set the heavy attack to true. We also need to turn it off in exactly the same way. Now this is possible because in the animator we built, these only return back to the uh, movement stage when the animation runs out. So even if we turn the attack off halfway through the animation, the animation will continue to fire. It looks like I have a... Um, I don't know why that turned into a compare to. I'm not sure what button I pressed to make that happen. There we are. So now it should work. What we, are ha what we actually have is a slight flaw in our logic, but Fortunately, the way that it works hides that flaw. And I'm going to show you that flaw, but this is the very slow heavy attack that we have. Just as kind of a placeholder animation. And you can see what that flaw is right now. I'm just clicking and I'm getting the heavy attack. The reason is because we're not resetting our heavy attack counter. We want to do that down here. When you let go of the mouse button, reset the heavy attack counter. There's actually another flaw in our logic, but that one's completely invisible. So here is our heavy attack, and then more light attacks. The other flaw in our heavy attack uh, system is that we actually trigger the light attack every single time we trigger the heavy attack. But we trigger the heavy attack first. And that means that we're in the heavy attack animation when we trigger the light attack. And the light attack animation is just ignored because it can't 
be attacked from there. You can't you can't move into the light attack animation from the heavy attack animation. But if we want it to be a little bit cleaner, we would say if heavy attack delay counter is less than heavy attack delay, set the light attack to true. Well, that won't change anything in terms of how this works, though, because it all works fine. But the thing we have now is an issue where um, we slide around while we're attacking, which is kind of silly. So we want to actually disable movement while we're attacking. Now, how do you think we can do that? Well, there's a lot of ways to approach this, but I think the easiest way to approach it is to only have movement enabled when the animator is in the movement uh, animation. So we have to be in this animation in order to allow movement. And I think that that's the easiest way to do things. But to check for that is actually not very straightforward. Uh, so it requires a little bit of knowledge about how an animator works. And what we need to do is we need to look at what we've got in our animator. We've got a lot of options. Animation, for example. You think that would get you the animation that's playing? No. Uh, well, what else can we use? Well, it turns out what we need is uh, quite a bit down at the bottom here called animator... Uh, is it the animation clip state or the animator state? I think it's the animation clip state. And we're looking at the topmost layer, which is zero. Now this actually returns an array Let's see if I can get it to tell us what it returns here. It returns an array of animation infos. So, animation info AI equals, there we go. And we say if AI dot length is less than one, return. That means that the animator hasn't actually initialized yet. We'd rather just avoid that. It happens in the very first frame, uh, and it's best not to cause a problem because of it. And then we say, well, okay, the very first piece of animation info we've got uh, what is the clip? What is the clip's name? Debug.log that for us, would you? So now we're saying, okay, well, what is the name of the clip that we are allowed to move? What, what, what sort of names are we looking at here? And we can see that it says idle. Idle, idle, idle. A attack light. Strafe left turn. Okay, we're compressed at the moment, so let's uh, uncollapse that so that we get the full, full details here. And you can see how we get a lot of these details, but these are the actual animations that are playing and not the uh, and not the state here. We're not getting movement. We're getting the individual animations that are playing. So instead of the get animation clip state, how about we say get current uh, animator state, which gives us an animator state info return. You might be wondering, what is an animator state info? Let's find out. And we can say AI dot, and we have a lot of things in here, name hash, tag hash, all of this stuff. Um, this is why working with Mechanim is occasionally quite obnoxious. It does not use the name uh, uh, movement for the movement frame, for the movement object. Instead, it uses a name hash. And I think that this is pretty obnoxious, but it is something we can work with here. See, so we can say is name and then pass it a name. And that will hash the name we pass it. So we can say debug.log ai.isName and then movement. And let's just go ahead and see what it has to say for itself. If we go back into this, hit play. True, 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 true. Oh, that didn't work because I. False, true, false. So there we go. You can't check what the name is because it gets hashed, but you can check if it's equal to another string. So in order to do this, we just say, okay, well, if the name is movement, then we can do this. If the name is not movement, we can't. So we say if not ai.isName movement return. Don't move if, uh, if we can't move. Pretty straightforward, right? So hit play. We're walking around, we're walking around, we're walking around, we're attacking. Walking around, walking around, walking around, we're attacking. Now we do get some sliding going, so see that slide? And I'm actually inclined to leave that. It might be a little bit too glassy to feel right at the moment, but I think it can be polished into something that feels pretty good, and we can get some kind of good sliding thing going. Um, but we are also going to add in directional attacks. These simple attacks here, these are just for uh, when you don't want to move while you're attacking. And I have to figure out why the character is slowly rotating. Um, 
In case you're wondering why she's not facing forward, there appears to be a slight bug in the animator um, where she slowly rotates, even though all that stuff should be baked. Well, while I'm here, I might as well check it out. This sort of bug will pop up a lot in your own stuff, so it's good to know what the heck uh, is causing it. See how it's all baked in? So I shouldn't ever actually change it all because it's all baked, unless there is one of these where it's not baked. Oh, if you look at that, that one's original and the rest of these are body orientation. I bet that it's... Oh, I, I don't know what I just hit there. Hopefully that didn't break anything. Uh, I hit a button that I thought was apply and uh, it wasn't. I don't know what it was. But this is probably it. If the rest of them were all body orientation and this one wasn't, that could very well be that this one was not looping correctly. Yeah, the rest of these are all body orientation. And cleave is an animation that doesn't actually exist, but that's okay. No, we're still getting the rotation, aren't we? I'll try and figure it out. Anyhow, it all works uh, passably. There is some problem with rotations, but we'll go ahead and figure that out in the future here. And uh, it works fine, because if you hold down the mouse button, you get a big attack, and if you just tap the mouse button, you get a light attack. And that's a very easy way to do multiple attacks with one mouse button. What we'll probably do next episode is make these attacks actually hit, but that's only if I can fix this rotation, this rotation bug. It's really quite obnoxious. Hmm. Well, next time.